Well, so much for Ranger School. I said I'd be making a video about why I'm not in the Army anymore and outlining my general theory of why the world sucks. And here it is. And the long and short of it is that the girl I'd been dating for two years and was very deeply in love with turned out to be a mutant lesbian hose beast with multiple personalities. And when I say multiple personalities, I mean that after we broke up, I got an email from her account from somebody who called himself who called himself Mike say, saying telling me that she was a horrible person and he knew because he lived inside her head. In college was incredibly boring because I wasn't learning anything that I couldn't learn that I couldn't teach myself at the friggin' public library. All goodwill hunting and shit. And I was just very disillusioned with the way the economy was being run, so I decided to join the army. My recruiter came to me, asked me what I wanted to be, and I told him I wanted to be the turret gunner on a Humvee in Slaughter City. That was the dream. Uh, but when he looked at my ACT score and my ASVAB and my GT and all that good and all those numbers, he said to me, "No way, you're way too smart for that." So he talked me into a job with military intelligence, specifically as a signal intelligence cryptological linguist. And there are a few things that he neglected to tell me, but we'll get to that in a minute. See, I went to basic training at Fort Lost in the hot, wet woods, Missouri. And to tell you the truth, I loved every minute of it. I, was, uh, I got in great shape. I learned how to do all kinds of awesome, high-speed soldier shit. And I made some amazing friends. It was a, it was a really great experience. And, you know, I'd do it all over again. Personally, I'm of the opinion that Army basic training doesn't suck nearly enough, and that the Marines are close, but only just. After basic, I went, I went on to the DLI FLC in Monterey, California, and let me tell you, I fucking love military intelligence. Like, if you want to be in the infantry, my recommendation to you would be, don't join the infantry. Go MI. And from MI, you can get attached to a Ranger Battalion or Special Forces Group. Which is what I wanted to do. I wanted so bad to be a signal analyst attached to a Ranger unit. That was the dream. After the whole turret gunner thing. After I got talked out of the whole turret gunner thing. And I even learned a secret while I was there. But they made me sign a piece of paper promising not to tell you what it is, so I'm not going to. And the people there were really great. I made some amazing friends. I partied like a rock star. One time I got really drunk and I offered to suck a Marine's dick, and I'm kind of sad that he said no. And the leadership was great. All the sergeants and officers, they had, they were all MI, except for my company commander, which we'll get to in a minute. They'd all seen it all and done it all. They all had stories to tell. And they all had brains. Only problem was class. What my recruiter failed to tell me was that uh, at the end of the course? At the end of the course, I would have to be at 
the prof the language proficiency of a, a teenage native speaker in reading, writing, and in reading, writing, talking, and listening. And my target language was fucking Korean. Basically, I had one year to do what a college student does in six years. And, uh, I fucked out after four months. And now I know how I can remember how to say hello and ask people for cigarettes in Korean. Korean is a fucking insane language. I hate it. It actually has a higher drop rate. It actually, actually, the DLI FLC has the highest drop rate in the entire military. It has a higher drop rate than special forces selection. Yet somehow, people graduate. I spent about five months as a holdover, thinking that I was going to get kicked out. And I even went through part one of a separation physical. But then one day, completely out of the blue, my platoon sergeant calls me into his office, and he's all like, "Private Davis, guess what you're gonna be do? Guess what you're gonna get to do for the next five years?" So I got recla reclassed to a to 14 Echo, which is uh, operator maintainer for for the Patriot missile defense system, and I got sent to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. At first, and before I got there, I was pretty excited because. That's combat arms. That's fucking hook. I'm gonna blow shit up. But, uh, the truth is, you really can't get any more pogue than air defense artillery. It hasn't been used since the Gulf War. Patriot hasn't been used since the Gulf War. And it has a 25% success rate. So, if the, uh, so if the Iraqis launched four scuds at us, only three of them were making it through. Forty shots, ten kills, hit. My company commander and XO back in Monterey were both former ADA. I have no idea what the fuck they were doing in an intelligence. And they warned me before I left that ADA has the worst leadership in the army. And by God, they were right. Shit fucking sucked. I had multiple NCOs lie to my face multiple times. My platoon sergeant was dumber than a sack of hammers. Seriously, he's one of those he was one of those guys where every time he opens his mouth, I just thought, wow, this guy's dumb. And my first sergeant didn't give a flying fuck about army regulations. And uh, basically did whatever he wanted, and the commander was the first sergeant's bitch. It was a mess, and I couldn't deal with it. I've been tr I was trained to think like an MI soldier, and I don't want to learn how to think like an ADA soldier because those guys are retarded. Seriously. They're fucking retarded. I couldn't do five years of that shit, man. I'd be wasting my life, turning into a fat alcoholic, dealing with comically shitty leadership dealing with fucking comically shitty leadership doing absolutely nothing with my life I don't see how anyone could do a whole enlistment of that and still call himself a man so I got myself kicked out and it's actually pretty easy to leave when you're in training, when you're on training status, because uh, well, the army is down, the army's downsizing because the fucking irrational pussies in the government don't understand the importance of keeping the military strong, even if there's peace. So, I just started fucking up in very minor ways, like 
taking naps and not shaving. And they'd be all like, Davis, do you want to be here? And I'd be all like, nope. No, I do not. Am I all the way, Sergeant? And when I was a holdover in Fort Sill, I was treated like a subhuman. And a fucking, uh, Irene, who makes very excellent videos, he made a visit video talking about legis legislations like SOPA and PIPA and government censorship and, s and the future of our society. And he has a few choice words to say about it. And when talking about things like censorship and internment, he quotes Fight Club. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. And, uh, yeah, I kind of took that to heart. <clears throat> like, if they tried to uh, make me do some extra detailed bullshit in direct violation of Army Regulation 350-6, you know what I did? Nothing. And they couldn't do anything about it because what they were trying to do was in direct violation of an army regulation that I could quote word for word. And, and what are they going to do to me? Kick me out of the army? And a bunch of the other people that they were treating like shit, they kind of rallied around me. It was beautiful. And if you'd indulge me going off on a tangent for a second. Let me just say that the next asshole who tells me that socialized medicine is a good idea is getting kicked in the balls, if they're a guy. If they're a girl, they're getting punched in the tits. And if they're a really fat guy, they're getting both. Because I spent a year staring into the maw of the Leviathan. <clears throat> If you think socialized medicine is a good idea, tell me that after you spent 10 hours rolling around on the floor of a clinic, clutching your balls, moaning, oh please baby Jesus, don't let me die like this, and you don't get called in to see the doctor until after the second time you run to the bathroom to throw up, and when you finally talk to the doctor, he gives you a prescription for Motrin and tells you to drink water. And that's about the shape of how that went down. I've got some more stuff written in my notebook here, but I don't really feel like getting into it right now. So just uh, stay strong. Stay motivated. I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Link to that Arini video in the good time bar. And uh, peace out, hail Satan, Shimham Farash.